Aaron Collins, Bristol Rovers. Better he wouldn't better. Collins in the great in better. In the tree, in the tree. Freezing by your dog. Aaron Collins, thank you so much for having us here in sunny, albeit a bit chilly, Bristol. You started your career as a, as a youngster here at the Bristol Rovers Academy for moving to Newport. Ten years later, you're back in the first team and you're their star man in League One. It's the way football works and the way life goes sometimes. It's obviously not what you're expecting. But I was here for six, seven years when I was younger, from the age of nines to like end of 15s, end of 16s. And then coming back to start last season was it was like a fresh start for me. I managed to get top goal scorer in the team, and that's where the fans wanted to see, and as well as us players wanted to be back in League One playing like we've been playing this season. The video of you celebrating the promotion with the fans up on was it a lamppost? Yeah, it was on the lamppost. Yeah. <laughs> that honestly, it must have been such a special moment. It was good memories to have coming back and then getting promoted and like say proving people wrong as well as going to make my family proud. Who brought me in three, four times a week to train when I was a youngster and then they're there obviously watching me get promoted with the club that it all started with. Yeah. It hasn't been a straightforward journey for you. Describe what that period was like for you as a youngster. I honestly didn't think that football was going to be a lifestyle or a, a career that I was going to end up pursuing. There was a time when my mum went out to Cardiff Uni and had to look at obviously going into like teaching. That's where, I was, that's where my aim was at the time. So I had to do a college course which brought in no money. Worked at McDonald's for three, four months. I was playing with the scholars and getting a bit of a chance. And yeah, like I said, there was times where I, was, I could have had to miss training with the scholars because I had to go to work. But I had to go out and earn my money, I, otherwise I couldn't travel in back and forth every day. So that's the way life went for me. And like I said, it was, I was grateful then that Michael Flynn was the manager of the 18s, Justin Edinburgh was the manager of the first team, and I managed to get a professional contract. You can't take this life for granted. Collins, and he throws there, trauma, Muddy Collins are off. It's every kid's dream to be a professional footballer and like no matter where you are playing, you're doing what you love every day and being paid for it and you can't complain, can you? And I was close to obviously, like I said, complete different career path. This is a random question, but I've got to ask, what was like the worst station in McDonald's when you're going to work? Is it I like chicken always, nuggets? I was is it always chips? on the till. I never, on the till. I never okay. dealt with the food. I was, uh, <laughs> I was always good at maths, so they put me on the till and I just had to smile and uh, yeah, sort the orders out. <laughs> One of your former clubs, Forest Green Rovers, now you played against Newport in the League Two playoffs against your little brother, yeah. Lewis. What was yeah. that like? So the first thing my mum and dad were saying, like, what are we going to do? The, the, we <laughs> are we going to gonna support? Yeah, we had to look at the positives and either way they were going to Wembley. You could say it's like a dream come true because at the end of the day, not for my mum and dad especially, it's, you don't get many kids who are both professional footballers and for both of us to be on the pitch at the same time and then watching, it was like a proud moment for us. It's fair to say, would you agree it's the best season you've ever had as a footballer? Yeah, I, I feel like over the last two, three, four seasons, I've gradually got better as a player and maybe grown into myself. But last season, top goal scorer, 16 goals, 18 altogether, and then promotion. And like, players feed off confidence, and I was happy. As well as, like I said, it's, it's close to home, and I, I was ready to just go and smash this season. This season, you're second behind Erling Haaland for most goals and assists in the top four divisions. That's not too bad. No, it's uh, <laughs> obviously the stuff, I, I don't oversee this stuff and obviously people tell me about it. And yeah, it's, it, it is great. And it's like I said, at the moment, I'm just kind of showing what I can do and, and just playing my football and enjoying it. And it's a lot of people like looking at the goals, but then a lot of people don't look at the assists. And then when they realize together, it comes, like, I've got 25 at the moment in, I think it's like 33 games. Then it, people are like, oh, actually, he's, he's not just a goal scorer. And there's a lot more he can bring to the table as well. I know you had the Welsh Mafia Spurs with Ben Davis, Rodon and Bale. You've got your own Welsh Mafia yeah. going on yet. Yeah, no, the, the Beefy's funny because Beefy's from Liverpool, so he got such a scouse accent. <laughs> uh, James Connolly, sorry. And uh, yeah, he, like, he, he's always going, oh, as I went to the Welsh call up, us Welsh boys want to be watching you on, like, in the first team. Him and Luca went and played 20 ones together. Obviously, they're fellow Welshmen. I travel in with Luca every day, and like he's, he's one of my best mates. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have them around the camp as well. 
the Welsh squad is going through a big transition at the moment and I think the squad that Rob Page announces over the next couple of weeks is going to be really interesting. Is that on the back of your mind at all, that you could potentially be in that squad? Yes, yeah, that's always going to play on the back of my mind, but at the moment I'm just kind of concentrating on like doing what I need to do for my team. Collins and Gorfin and away it sits with the score yard on the one half. In fact, the more and more I can do, obviously it's going to benefit the chance of me getting into the Wales squad. It would be a dream come true to play for my country and I, I'm looking forward to having that chance. And if that does occur, then it'd be, it'd be a great moment for me, and my family and obviously everyone close to me. Because there was that one friendly against Germany where you did represent the Wales under-19s team. What was that experience like? Being Marsh, I want to be involved. I want to go and make caps for my country and, and play for my country. And yeah, I had the one chance. It was uh, I was at Newport at the time. Managed to go out to Germany and play a friendly against them. And I'll always say it's probably one of my toughest games I've ever had. It was uh, frustrating not being able to have another chance. But it, that it is football is what it is at the point. And like I said, hopefully now I can earn my chance and, and improve as well. And one thing about Rob Page is that he doesn't shy away from giving opportunities to players that play for teams in the lower leagues. Just how much of an extra drive does that give you to see that that path is there? Strikers hit their peaks at different times. Looking at someone like Kiefer Moore especially is like, he's gone from, I know he's at Forest Green and I've seen stuff like that, and, and he's gone and now he's playing in the Prem. And yeah, it gives you the goal to know that as a striker and as an attacker, if you do what you need to do in front of the goal, then you, you can make it at any point. Because of course you've followed Wales as a fan. The 2016 the Euros, I, I, that's one thing I will never forget. The happiness that it brings is just, it, it is, you can't, you can't describe it. And that's why I'm hoping now to obviously be a part of something as well, with uh, standing there singing the national anthem on in the fan zone, to then maybe go into hopefully, maybe one day being out on the pitch and singing it with the team.